cash game challenge. Starting out plus 160-ish about. Well, I guess technically plus like 220, but yeah, let's not let's not count the stuff where I did in blast. Let's just do all cash game. So this will be session five. Late night, so it might take a little while to get full tables going, but doesn't seem uh, doesn't seem like too much of an obstacle. I don't think I want to do like a massage therapist school or thing. Like I think I would like to find like someone mm. kind of like me who provides a personalized service. Mm. You know what I mean? Because. Especially, yeah, I don't think people are experimenting on me right now. I'm fucking me up. <laughs> I don't know if it's really experimenting, but I, I get what you're Trust saying. Trust me, I've been in, in tech school like that. Some bitches, be, they don't be knowing what the fuck they do, and that's no experiment they do. <laughs> Whatever service you're getting. <laughs> wonder if I can use my feet to massage somebody. <laughs> Because they don't really remember what they're supposed to be doing, and they be get like, see, that's the thing with the beauty schools and stuff. Yeah. You never know who you're gonna get, and some people. They're like boxes of chocolates. Well, yeah, but there were a lot of motherfuckers that would just. Bro, and I would see them taking clients, and I'm like, she is fucking that shit up, but you know what I mean. Well, I mean, there's a lot of I don't know if, you, but there's are there massage. I mean, other than Jack Shacks, are there massage chop shops like nail shops like? Where you get a crappy massage. <laughs> no, but at the school you'll have more of a chance of that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're still learning. Mm. And with me having kind of crazy issues, not yet. Not Do you mind if it's a, a gay guy? No, I don't care who the fuck it is. All right, I know a couple. I just need I, good hands. I prefer a gay guy. The hands are smooth. Oh my gosh, they have some amazing skin textures. They know how to rub a body. I'm, I don't give a fuck who it is. All right. I'm telling you, the best massage I ever had in my life was by this dude that was like, he looked like a dorkier, nerdier, creepier version of Woody Allen. Oh, yeah, you told me about that guy. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And it was seriously the best fucking massage of my life, so much so that I was considering turning that into a happy ending massage for him. Mm. <laughs> There's a guy. Not even for me. There was a guy who uh, hit me up a while ago. Who he 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 is a massage therapist and he likes just doing rub downs. Yeah, that, I remember you telling me. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I thought about it, but I wasn't quite comfortable at that time. Yeah. Uh, I've semi kept in contact with him, and uh, he's a. I think he's a tall. Uh, if I remember correctly, he's uh, like a. Not lanky, but what's the term for like slender or yeah. muscular, but right, the thin, right, swimmer's body, like oh, that okay. kind of thing. Okay. Uh, look like a seal without the scars. Oh, is black? Yeah, yeah, ebony, just oh. very black. But uh, reminded me of how they always depicted Othello. Huh, that's funny. But uh, but yeah, I don't really care. I don't care what their sexual preference is as long as they know what the fuck they're doing. Because mm. I got issues <laughs> between the spinal stenosis. That's the other thing. The is lower it lower lumbar stuff? My shoulder. Do we think it might be better to go to a sports therapy massage? Absolutely. All right. Well. That is a great idea, and. So actually, there is this lady that I found right after the pandemic started. Who was, she was really trying to up her advertising for it, of the one-on-one -on -one experience because of, you know, with COVID and stuff. Mm. And her, it was legitimate massage LP. I think that's what her thing was. Wow. The fact that, you know, we live in Las Vegas, so you have to put the word legitimate. <laughs> if you're going to be right. a private massage, it's just like, I'm not whacking you off. <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas massage therapist since 2013, specializing in sports spa massage. Charity event and corporate wellness. Corporate wellness. Yeah, I remember at Markel we had the corporate wellness thing, and every once in a while I'd bring in like a yoga instructor. Oh, okay, yeah. I, it, it sounded to me like an HR thing. I was like, what the fuck is corporate wellness? Mm -hmm. Pretty much is an HR thing. 
No, 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 but I mean, They get like, tax write-offs for providing these events for their employees. Oh, of course. I don't mind this bed here with the pear and shitty flush draw. This is, this is kind of one of those where nobody's really made a stand. It's kind of the same reason for this three bet. This min raise versus the poster uh, is kind of, uh, it's kind of one way. It's either really strong or really weak. What the fuck did you get called by? Yeah, see, so that just takes it right down. That's another one of those where, because I have removal. King, queen, two pair on a four flush board. King, queen. Whoa. With an ace on board. Whoa. In a three bet pot. Whoa. That's some uh, payoff wizardry. Yeah, I always see that place um, just down the road. Is that no? I don't think it's called like that. Hey, what's up, Leslie May? How are you? Oh, isn't that um, Netherlands? Yes, Netherlands. Well, I like this, and you know what else I just saw too? I, th I think it sits it to you that stretching place. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely want to. I... Well, what do they charge? No, I don't remember. That's the. Okay. If you want to do something like that, find out what they charge, and that gives me an idea of how to afford it. Okay. I'm literally sitting here clicking buttons on the internet, pulling money out of the air, and you don't know how much things cost. I need to know how much of this I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I got this guy heads up. Nobody wants to play this guy. This is interesting because normally I'm not limping this one, but one of my favorite players is in the pot, so and by favorite I mean unbelievable target. Not gonna tell you who it is. Cause it could be watching. Doesn't matter, didn't hit anyway. Another poster, another raise. Those little pots don't seem like much, but they add up. These little, you know, two and three blind pots. You know, they just, when you just take them down like that, plus you're not sitting there floating out in the ether, you know, with no idea what to do. I want six tables, but there's not going to be six. See, this player's still limping. That's hilarious. There's not going to be six nine handed tables, and I don't really want to integrate short play unless I'm doing zoom, so. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with this, and if I need a if I need a sixth after I get on the fifth one, I'll just get on a zoom table. But yeah, Leslie, I've been doing uh, cash sessions off uh, stream, and I kind of decided, you know what, why not stream it? So I made it into a cash game challenge. So this is session five. We're about a quarter of the way there, and uh, playing ten and L because uh, the first stage is how fast to a thousand. And uh, then I think it'll go 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. Listen to this. What's up? PTSD and trauma-informed body massage. This is one of her mm. things she can take. Ideal for a chronically tensed or pain-influenced body. This session is a journey of remedial and relaxation techniques designed to introduce a parasympathetic nervous system response, improve range of motion, mobility, and decrease pain. Ideal to bring short and still for her initial session. Remember when you know how like when you're messed up in one area and I decide to I'm rubbing a different area? Yeah. That's parasympathetic. The mirrored oh, okay. the mirrored parts of your body where certain nerves affect other muscles. Just the fact that she offers that means she has knowledge of that, which yeah. is amazing. Well it's medical knowledge. She also offers sports massage, relaxation, medical massage. Yeah. It's a quick but technical massage with your desired focus area for pain or injury management. Ideal for TMJ, tense shoulders, hello, tendonitis, sciatica, neck pain, if I'm sleeping well, or to address that nagging problem you, area you notice during your workout. So you can bring your wife? Ha <laughs> ha. That's kind of neat. This is kind of blocky, but... Yeah, I should just have the best hand with the nine. That flush was kind of weird over here, but when I make the one-liner straight, I just can't fold. And uh, he did have a weird hand. So 
this is how you do this. Unjoin the list and then click the sit down. See how it wouldn't let me sit? It's because we were both trying to get on at the same time, but if you unjoin the list while you have the seat reserved, uh, then you can get in. It's like pulling out the chair but not sitting down. All right, five, five games isn't bad. <laughs> what you need to do is get your ice on it. Ooh, okay, I was looking for it last night. I mean, standard. No, it hasn't been standard, actually. Um, actually... <laughs> So am I doing this pizza? It's up to you. I mean, it's late. They're they're, they're gonna fuck it up again. Six three. So this is I have all the confidence in the world that that Domino sucks. I've gotten pizza from there so many times and it's been great. What? They don't. You know what it? Don't, don't, don't use the app. Right. Don't use the app. Call them. Call them and tell them you have the deal in the app. Do I really have to put, or they, can they just apply it? I'm sure they can apply it. Because that's the thing is, they don't have to, you don't have to deal with somebody. It's much easier to just say, fuck you, and just not do anything. I'm, I'm telling you, the other night they just totally gave no fucks. And it's not exactly clear weather out there right now. It's kind of cold. Plus, you can explain last time they said they delivered it, but we never got it. So it's 103. You can give them some directions to the back of the plaza. You know? I'm just no. trying to make it. <laughs> no, I'm saying you're killing my vibe because I'm such a. I don't want to talk on the phone. I mean, I get that, but you're ordering pizza. Yes, Elon Musk, start working on pizza robots. Sure, we already have the business on the house. He ain't inventing shit, so he's not... I didn't say he invented <laughs> it. I said I'm sure he already has it in his own house. I'm no, sure that's just exists. an Italian that he bought somewhere. That's not a robot. <laughs> he, just, he bought an Italian and painted him silver, all right? That's not <laughs> It's not the same thing. He calls it the Jovan E1000, you know, whatever like that. <laughs> when he turns his back, the guy's like, you get me out of here. You don't understand what he does to me when no one's around. <laughs> oh, let's just say garlic knots never felt so bad. Whoa. Do you have money for me to order this? So, see, now this is the other thing you're asking. I just thought about it that I don't have money because I bought my weed. This is the most stoner problem you've ever had. <laughs> I spent all my money on weed so I don't have money for pizza. This is This is the most stoner thing ever. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. It's like saying I don't have enough condoms left for the orgy. It's like kind of going yeah, hand in yeah, hand. That point. No, that's exactly that's exactly the point. That's exactly the point. <laughs> It's been a bad month. We're going to have to. It's going to be chit chat anyway with Papa. This is a weird pot going on here. All right, we'll check that one. Yeah, weird pot going on here. <laughs> I'd call you kettle, but somebody would say I was racist. I mean, this is a limped pot. This should be really. He overbet. He could definitely have the gut shot or a made two pair, but I don't think I can fold yet with my own gut shot. Yeah, if he bets now, it's just screwed. Does he ever have two pair here? Don't worry about it. I'm 
pasta. Why does this hang on a sec there? Why does this seem I feel like it's like deuce tray or nothing, right? Is the single ace ever good here? Do I need to see this to learn this hand? Two pair. Yeah, okay. That was worth paying off. And I was right. I was right, but now I know next time I got a raise. Hmm. Um, so I'm just so happy. He's over here tucked in my leg. He's got his pizza. He's just like full in this. Look at him. He's a happy boy. He has been such a mama's baby the past couple days. Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I think it's because of the weather change, honestly. He's in snuggle mode. Like he's cold, so it's like yeah. Christmas weather on. They're just so good. You can put them on. You could put his on. I honestly, I don't want to go on Choo Choo. Oh if, no, Choo Choo doesn't get his till Christmas Eve. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a matter of temperature. If it's you know, it's getting to that point. But I think once we get below fifty, he has to put it on. But we have to put it on and take it off of him. You know, can't just leave it. Oh on. no, I'm talking about his Christmas one. He'll get that one on Christmas Eve. Okay. I'm I'm talking about for general warmth. I'm oh. Because he doesn't really get cold. No, he he wants to go in faster. If it's cold out. Right. Yeah, see the overbet, I should have, he overbets the turn and then bets the same bet on the river. I should have raised it. Kind of like this one. Uh, I'm going to check this back. Yeah, that just, that check raise just works there. I'll go ahead and bet the turn straight up. This doesn't mean anything. Uh, get the pizza. I'm just basic, basically betting for general value here. I don't really expect much to happen with this. Uh, I mean, sometimes he can have a six. Really? Really? I'm doing thin crust, by the way. Seems fine. Yeah, I'm not paying this. <clears throat> Something in the timing before he checked, I was like, should I even bet this river? Um... But it's an easy spot to bet. And then, so I just went for the straight value bet. And when he check raises, nobody's check raising the river. Especially not after he saw me call that last one. So, I, I think he actually nailed that six pretty full on in the face. I'm going to use this card. Traditional delivery this time, no contactless shirt. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Make him earn the fucking tip. That way you have to write it in. Oh, so don't tip ahead of time. No, I mean if you're if you were gonna run a card, how are you gonna tip ahead of time? He's got to have you he sign the still, thing. He can still tip ahead of time because you paid him for the card. Well, you saw what happened last time when you tipped ahead of time. It's, we're tipping for a service. I mean, I'm, I'm all about the... Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. This is just supposed to look like bullshit. Um, yeah, we can bet this. It's amazing to think how there are environments most people lose out, and some people like yourself have the ability to... took thousands of hours to gain through, which you make a living by sheer dedication. Basically, to summarize, despite the luck factor in poker, it's all about how much math you know, basically. Yeah, it's a lot of math. It, it's funny because I, I always say, uh, like, I never understood why people watch poker. Like, watching poker on TV and seeing the cards and it's like, oh, he's bluffing. Like, that can be fun. But I've sat there on the rail or had people on the rail when I'm playing at, you know, some casino or whatever. You're playing in a tournament and they're just like, oh, there's people. And, like, strangers are sitting there, like, coming up to you and they're like, dude, that was whatever. And it's like... This is a game. This isn't a spectator sport. This isn't football. It's fucking boring. How are you? <laughs> but, um, yeah, it is It is just a ton of math and study and, uh, uh, and general knowledge and, you know, experience. But, yeah, thanks. And that's. I think that's the true with anything, though. You know, with, with any skill, you just kind of practice it and learn. And uh, go from there. It's this call behind that made me call. This is the perfect one to flop two pair on. 
because this player should be raising a ton. The problem is this player pool isn't smart enough to know that. So I'm going to take my time. And then I'm going to jam all the money in the pot against one pair. That's the way you do it. That's just a situation. That's a situation that I've seen thousands of times. Like, I'm calling knowing that I'm behind because of having 6-1 to one and this player's action in the pot. And check jamming like that. I don't think the other player even considered what I might have. I think they just decided, well, he's got a flush draw. Or he's got a straight draw. Like, he thought I had 10 jack. Meanwhile, am I opening 10 jack? And if I am opening 10 jack, I'm only going to have the suited varieties, of which there's only three left. Like, what is... I like this. When I'm betting heavy and this guy's just calling. If you flopped a set, it's just too bad. But I'm just going to keep betting heavy and fast. Because it should go off pretty much the same way. It's that fine line between betting for value and protection and over betting the pot so that players can easily play perfectly against you. Like if you, if you just bet, you know, all in every time, it's very easy for somebody to play perfectly against you because they can just sit there and go, oh, I got it, I call, or I don't got it, I fold. This donking shit has been going on, I noticed tonight, that's like the fifth time I've seen somebody donk into the razor. Uh, usually when things like this happen, there's a shift and somebody posted something on YouTube about a good hand or somebody donked in a tournament. Like these are localized players. So basically like if one of them does something that the other ones see, they'll all start adopting it, which is good because you can adjust very quickly against a small player pool. And like you saw, this player donked out, I just called it, and this player is now tired of this shit, he makes the big raise, and goes broke with one pair. And it's just, uh, it's never the play. I guarantee you, if you asked him, if you flop top pair, and somebody check raises, uh, are you going to go broke? He would have said no. It's amazing. Well, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, I am going to bet this one. It's true, I never have a jack, but he shouldn't have too many jacks. I can definitely have over pairs. I can definitely have tens. I think tens is like my minimum to play this way. I get check raised, but it's kind of smallish. Uh, I'm not folding yet. He could definitely have queens or something like that. I think if he checks back here, it kind of tells the tale. Like if he checks here, I kind of have to let it go. If he keeps piling money in, I kind of have to fold. He checks. He checks here. See, the problem is that a lot of cards can come off on the river that can fuck me. So I'm just going to bet again. Like, unless he has a set of sixes, I think I'm good here. He may jam with hands like Queen's. Yeah, see, like, ugh, like that hand was ridiculous. And here's the thing. He's using a very limited knowledge of what to do. And it's so hilarious because this morning, right, we're going to review this hand right now. This morning... We went through some examples of uh, flop betting from the tournament masterclass. This is straight out of that. The example was King King Six. This board happens to be Jack Jack Six. So if you want to see where this knowledge comes from, look at that. So it's about ranges and stuff, right? So pre-flop, this player raises, uh, and I three bet from the button, right? He's opening in a uh, middle position. So he can have anything. He can definitely have king-queen. He can definitely have 10-jack, ace-jack, all those hands. He can also have all the pairs, but so can I. And my button range, when I have 10s, is super... My actual hand is near the top of my button raising range because I'm raising the button in this scenario probably 50% of the... With 50% of hands that I'm playing. Uh, you know, the other 50% I'm just folding. So when I'm raising... Are there some calls? But it's about 50% of my range. And of that 50%, this is in the top 10% of hands. So I'm at the top of my range. I'm feeling pretty good. And then this flop comes off, and he checks, and you heard my reasoning. I decided to go ahead and just bet because, yeah, I'm not going to have a jack much, but, my, but this doesn't change the value of my hand. There's no ace or king out here. You know what I'm saying? It's very unlikely that he has, you know, when, when no card queen or higher comes out, I should be good here. Because I'm imagining he would have 4-bet, you know, kings or aces, ace-king, things like that. But 
Even Queens, I think, gets 4-bet a lot when the button 3-bets, so I should be good. He goes for this check raise, which is not proper. If you had a jack here, you would not check raise this. Like, here's the thing. People should, and I do at these stakes, but versus population playing on this site at this stake, they don't do it. So what is this? This is a bet that isn't fully thought out. It's saying, well, if you don't have a jack, you can't continue. It's not true. Uh, he thinks it's true because if he doesn't have a jack and he made this continuation, because this is a value bet. This isn't even a, a standard continuation bet. This is a straight value bet. And then so he makes this small raise uh, that's not good. And then he calls and then completely loses heart. I said, if he checks the turn, I'm probably good. If he jams the turn, I have to fold because it's an overpair or a jack. And of course he checks the turn and I just decide to go ahead and just bet. And I'm only betting half pot, but it's a it's a large percentage. It's half of his stack because I'm trying to get him committed. If he has queen 10 and decides to jam it in here and he draws out on me, cool. But I'm going to make him make the biggest mistake he can, which is risking his whole stack right now. And nobody's just calling with king queen or queen 10 or anything like that in hopes to hit one pair that may not be good. He could absolutely be up against a jack here. So he just folds. And I protected my hand successfully. And I got pretty damn good value. You know, 80 blinds I won on that pot. <laughs> this is the classic scenario. Uh, I think I'm just going to call because there's a player behind. Because uh, I don't know if the player behind is going to go off. But this is just the classic. I mean, now it's just... I mean, unless it's the, this is the opening scene in Rounders, I don't think I ever lose here. Uh, he's all in. I'm going to let the time tick and just call. It's going to be pretty face up that I have a monster. Uh, you know what? Let's just let's just jam it in because this guy should have a jack sometimes. All right, cool. Hold. Thank you. Cash games are easy when you think about what you're doing. Pretty good start so far. Yeah, I'm up two buy-ins already. Hmm. Not bad. Uh, this player limped and I raised it. Um, checking here is fine. I'm going to... I'm just going to call this. I was thinking about raising it to just take the pot away. The problem is I don't think he folds many draws. If he bets big here, yeah, there you go. Nice flush. Like, there's just no reason to raise there because my hand is so vulnerable that he can hit a lot of things and there's a lot of cards where I can't bet the river. But when he leads out for that dollar, this isn't Phil Ivy I'm playing against. Did you use the card? Mm hmm I just don't want to lose it. I also don't need you hanging on to that shit. <laughs> You're not a person anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm on a diet, but we don't keep cake in the house. <laughs> right. That's the exact point. I know. No, I wouldn't do that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I might eat the cake. Definitely eat the cake. Whatever. Now I fucking want cake, you asshole. <laughs> Okay, not my problem. Okay, asparagus. Ooh, some bacon wrapped asparagus. Okay, I didn't say bacon wrapped. I didn't no, say. I didn't talk about bacon wrapped. You have to. <laughs> celery. Asparagus. Celery. I don't know. Yeah, see, this is you're fucking everything up. Bacon carrots. Wrapped. I don't know. I don't like carrots. <laughs> <laughs> you should just say salad, but you'd be like, ooh, bacon wrapped salad, you know? No, no but I definitely want bacon wrapped. It's basically a bacon wrapped salad. <laughs> a reverse lettuce wrap where you just wrap lettuce and no, bacon. What did they call it? A, a, D, a... a what? When it's not together, like it's Deconstructed. Not... There you go. A deconstructed. That was hard. I was high. It was hard to figure it's out. It's a hard to... word. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out how to like explain that word. What's that meme that I, I love where they're like, you see two episodes of the cooking channel and you're like, I made a, uh, a peanut reduction and uh, like a jam, oh, like a, yeah. a, a, straw, a strawberry a strawberry reduction with a uh, legume uh, light spread <laughs> on a brioche bun. It's a peanut butter and jelly fucking sandwich. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's hard not to talk to that way when you watch those shows. Did you know that yoga and Pilates are not the same as stretching? Yeah. No, I know, I know that. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> it's saying that on this website, and I'm now realizing that there are probably a lot of people who don't realize that. But, yeah. Um, 
Pilates ain't even that old. Like Pilates has only been around for like 10 years. Mm, it's a little more than 10. I think it's like 20, 30. No, I don't. I mean, the, the real when it picked up. I'm sure it's been around since the fucking 50s, but in some form. But, uh, no, it says Pilates is a physical system developed in the early 20th century by Joseph Pilates and popular in many countries, including Germany, the United States, and the United Kingdom. Well, the early 20th century, wouldn't that be like 1900? Oh, maybe. Right? I don't really understand how that all works. They go back one because the first century is zero. Oh. You see what I'm saying? If it's... If oh, it's okay. No, I get it. You right. Know, right. So yeah, it would have been around since the 1900s. And yoga. Yoga is fucking. A Hindu discipline aimed at treating the consciousness for a state of perfect spiritual insight and tranquility. A system of exercise is practiced as part of this discipline to promote control of the body. That's how I've always taken yoga. Yoga, I don't think of yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I've always taken yoga as a as a dyslexic wise man. <laughs> I've taken him as a Hindu discipline aimed at treating the consciousness for his team. He's definitely got some Gandhi in him. He definitely has. Like, he's a, like, you don't understand. That whole, like, species is just, there's a whole spiritual connection to them. I can't, I, there must be. They're like, they're like George of the Beatles for me. If I'm so connected mm. and so loving of this fucking character. See, and here's the thing. If you watched... The because uh, the, the the one where Yoda really shines is fucking Empire, when he's training Luke. Didn't I watch that one? I don't think you've. Well, you definitely didn't I, watch I it with them, me. I know them more by the numbers, not the. Five. Yes, I've seen four and five for sure. You've seen four and six, where the Ewoks come in and six. No, I've seen. So then I've seen four, five, and six. Hmm. I've, the the first I know I've watched three of them fully and there's one in the one two three series I don't know which mm. one of the one two three series but it's a it, it was one of the one two three series that I the prequels that I watched and yep. that's when I fell in love with Jar Jar Binks that's but episode I didn't one watch the full episode yeah that's the second one right that's number two. No, 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 episode, I just said it's episode one. Oh, it's episode one. Yeah, that's where Jar Jar gets introduced. Okay. This is an interesting <clears throat> one because I'm getting a great price here, almost four to one, on a hand that's going to be utterly disguised. I have dyscalia, yeah, we've, we've talked about that, so all I can hope to understand is math history because despite the condition, my memory is excellent. I could probably train myself to do math, but it's hard, uh, hard I tell you. Well, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> So uh, I think I can bet this for small value. Um, I watch Star Wars. Right? It's like the constant thought I have. <laughs> oh, it's Tuesday. Maybe I'll watch Star Wars. It's literally the first thought in my mind like, every maybe time. I'll watch episodes one, two, and three right now. That's why you see it as a spectator sport. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Well, but oh, here's that the. Actually, is interesting. Yeah, it kind of makes more sense it when you say so it like much that. Makes more sense why it's a spectator sport. Right. Now. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it, it's interesting to, because, um, see, this is so funny because this player is going to pay me off every day of the week and have no idea why. Um, it's a small bet. You could just let it go. You don't have to make a point. Oh, he folded. Good for you. Um, yeah, but that's the thing. Since you do have uh, pretty much perfect recall, you could just learn the things like it would be great for implementing you know charts and hand ranges uh like go to pokercoaching.com and get the free membership and go to the tools section and play around with the uh gto tournament charts and it'll and because that's the thing that for me was one of the hardest things to do because it's a it's a generalized knowledge for most players but if you have perfect recall uh, then it's going to be very easy for you to go, oh, I have 40 big blinds on the button. I should be raising king six when folded to not king five. Like, people don't know that unless they practice it a million times, but you probably get it much quicker. So you can still do it. You can still – it's just a different manner of learning. Like, there's players like Gus Hansen who, you know, was at one time one of the most dominant tournament players that there ever was, and that son of a bitch couldn't tell you the percentages on 
dick. He was just a feel player. I mean, it's like Stu Unger, you know, or Tom Dwan. I mean, Tom Dwan's become much more sophisticated, but, you know, these are players who just played on feel. And uh, I used to be mostly a feel player, but um, very quickly kind of realized that I was strong in the math. So kind of when, when the math started becoming more commonly known, I kind of gravitated towards that, but just as a base. But, you know, it still comes up where I'm like, eh, I should call this. You know, sometimes you just get a feeling. And I'm not putting anybody down for it, you know, watching it as a spectator sport. I mean, I'm just, it's just not the kind of thing I can watch. But uh, I'm going to check this one. I, I don't think, I think I could have bet the flop, but yeah, I'm just going to let this player have it. I, I've already terrorized them enough. Vanessa Russo is probably a favorite poker player. She does the exact percentages in her head like other people drive a car. Very true. Very true. But she's also very, um, what's the word? Not assertive and not aggressive. Concise. She's very concise with her moves. So you'll see she uses a very polarized betting strategy, which I totally endorse uh, as probably the best way of default. But she goes to it almost 100% of the time, like, her bets are either super small or super big, and it it, it fucks people up. Yeah, Vanessa Russo is really, a, you know, one of those. It's also, that's when it's fascinating to me, and I, I've said this before, that it's it's really fascinating to me to watch women play uh, because they are the minority in poker. So I'm just going to check this. There's no point to this. This is just stupid. Like, there's just... There's, there's just no point where I can just bluff those eights. Like, it's better to take those folds, too, because I'm playing a lot of hands, so it's like when I bet, making those folds kind of, or just checking those down and just giving up on the pot, it kind of adds to the, the value of the hands you play that you're not just fucking around. Like, this was a limp pot, and I decided to make a play in position. See, like this, I don't mind at all. Now, this player leads at me, I think this is another one of those ones where I can raise. Unless he has exactly two pair, I think I get the fold here. Well, I just requested a free session at Stretch Zone. He calls, the king comes off. I'm just going to put this player in. He could have me beat, but probably not. Yeah. Oh, he sucked out on the river. Look at the, look at the low odds after he puts his money in. He literally can't hit a club... Uh, What was that? Pizza. They got here that quick? It was either pizza or it was Chi-Chi. I mean, didn't you just order it? No. Go answer the door. I am. I'm huh? moving. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is hard to figure out. I don't know what's happening here. Here I come. I know I should have bet the turn. The problem is he has an ace. I fucked this up because I was talking. Hello. Oh, that is the pizza. I mean, does he turn his hand into a bluff here on the river? I fucked this up. I have to see it. A7. I knew it. I had to bet the turn. I fucking knew I had to bet the turn. And then because I fucked up, he didn't have a piece of paper? I know, I know I had, I fucked this up. I, I totally lost my track. I, I should have just, I would have been, I was supposed to bet the turn. Uh, that's exactly why I check, that's why exactly why I raised the flop when he donk let out, was to bet the turn. And I totally, I totally fucked that up. I didn't do it. I just spaced out. I don't know why I did that. Yeah, she goes all in with every good hand. And, and she's one of the ones who really latched onto that 20 big blind style. Man, I can't believe I just fucked that up. I set that up to bet the turn because there's no way he's continuing after I raise the flop and then the turn comes off like this. He checks. I'm just all in right here. That's the only move is I'm all in. But once he bets like this on the river, I can't push him off. Uh, I just had to call to see that I was right. Damn it. 
I, I, I totally fucked up. I totally lost my place there. Damn it. Thinking too much about Vanessa Russo. Hmm. That sucks. That's frustrating. That's that's the first blatant mistake I've made in a long time. I just totally spaced out. Mathematical rationalist. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, what did it cost me? Three bucks? It's fine. Just got to get over it. Focus. They got it here quick. Usually Domino's is very quick. That's why the other night I was like... Yeah, I'm, that's why I'm saying I don't think they... I don't think the guy ever took it out. <laughs> it's so crazy. You want a plate? Yeah. Need a plate or something. Just so you can pass me a couple because those are little slices. But whatever. Here, you just hang it. I'll put a couple on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what do you have to do? There's no meat, it's just spinach Get down. and feta mm. and alfredo sauce. Yeah, I'm supposed to jam that turn. Sam was right on the cusp for me. That's why I bet the turn. King nine. Huh? You want some more? I'm almost done with it. I know, that's why I'm asking you. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, fold, fold. That's going to piss me off for a while. I raised that flop with the intention of jamming the turn. I didn't do it because it just totally spaced out. That really is upsetting. And I, believe, I bet you they delivered to us first this time. Because what do you mean? What happened? Because this was the same exact order that I ordered the other night when they fucked up. Well, plus there'd be history. That's what I'm saying. I, I bet you they delivered us. Yeah. I mean in the computer. Right. Oh, okay. Because of that history in the computer, they probably delivered to us first. Yeah. And plus, they are just around the corner. Like, th those are just skippers. You know? Where the, where the place, there was places that, li that people who lived behind my uh, Pizza Hut when I was delivering pizzas, we wouldn't even get in the car. Mm -hmm. Just literally, we'd just walk it, jump the fence, and just walk up to this woman's house, this old woman, who ordered pizza a few times a week. I wish I could remember her name. She was really nice. She used to break bring, uh, cookies around. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved her. Mm. It's a good I wonder pick. what it would taste like on just their hand tossed. Better. I like the crispy crunchiness, because I do like their thin crust. I used to get their thin crust all the time. Remember with the pepperoni wow. sauce and mix and cheese? Mm -hmm. Pepperoni is <clears throat> good on thin crust, but... But I'm curious to see what this would taste like on their hand tossed now. I think I can bet this for value. Is close. Yeah, I have to bet that one. I don't need to show down the King Jack. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> All right. Oh, that really upset me. Yeah, that'd be good. Or even their Italian sausage. Eh, I think you're doing too much. Instead of the chicken. No, I know, but I'm saying I think that takes away from the Alfredo. Mm. I like their Italian sausage and potato. So this player is leading full pot. Oh, I don't see how he's ever leading at seven. <laughs> So I'm going to raise. The problem is these players behind. So one of them can have a seven for sure. Look at that. Just filled the gut shot on this table. That's pretty awesome. It is. You said that you have to let bad play go on a perfect recall. Remember. Yeah. I know. I know. Oh, I got timed out on a pair of nines. That sucks. I was reading. <laughs> See, look. Just goes down. This this is a this is a good thing to point out, right? I have the pocket eights. I'm gonna check raise this guy. He might he might fall for this. Cause I just did this to him when he had nothing, so I think he actually has two pair here. He may actually go off for the whole stack. I meant to just go all in. This small raise is hilariously insulting though. It's kind of really funny. If we both have 10 jack, I'm going to throw up. Yeah, you just had the six. <laughs> sucker foo. That's a real sucker foo. See, look at that. That's the guy that I fucked up the hand against, and I just stacked him. <laughs> so this hand with the eights, right? So... I opened, got called by all these people, right? Small blind checks. This guy leads out the full pot. On what planet does this guy have a seven? That he's doing this, leading into four players. This is the dream scenario if you have a seven, right? So I just raised small. And it's small because of the players behind. But now these players behind, even if they have nines or tens, which is very possible, they still can't call. Because it's like, fuck, this guy just like has an, has an overpair to the board. My overpair, coming from early position, can easily be jacks plus. So do you like sevens or do you like nines here or tens? Probably not. This guy thought about it for a long time and then folded. And we just get the fold. You got to think out the whole thing. And here's the thing. I'm not going to let the value of my hand go just because some dumbass wants to make a bet. Some more people are going to join in the chat right about now. I'm going to hang back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to hide you you know we can all talk who's who's the other people <laughs> right i'm like do you know something we don't know right sometimes people watch other streams i've heard it before where people are like oh dude brace yourself and then like 30 seconds later like a uh, a host comes in because oh. somebody's like oh i'm gonna host this guy i've seen that yeah That's kind of hilarious. I caught that open ranch <laughs> before it hit the bed.
This is a limp pot. I could have squeezed it from the blind, but I think it's another good opportunity just to check down. And if we get to show it, it's kind of awesome. I could win here sometimes. If nobody bets, I should be able to win 50% of the time. Nah, 60% because somebody should have an ace, but they limped, right? It's all limps. All right, I'm just going to bet for slight protection and value. There's not much people can have here. This player calls. He should have a flush draw a lot. He can have some aces, but it's kind of super rare. Um, well, I am going to bet the river. Unless I'm up against a deuce, it's very hard to call me. Um, I do have the ace of diamonds. Wow, my dude had it and didn't raise. That's a punk move. You should be raising this river. That's kind of hilarious. He should have been raising the turn is what he should have been doing. And then he just calls the river. It's like, what deuces do I have that are full? It's kind of, eh. it's kind of really bad. That was amazing. It's pretty good. <coughs> I feel like I can think now. I've been <coughs> wanting that since I have it at our house. Right. Because I only have two slices. That's a great card on the turn. It should also freeze the action because it's the over card. So I don't think we're going to see any betting. Hmm. <coughs> This is interesting because I'm not, I'm trying to figure out the actual good hand this guy has. And the only one I can come up with is King Jack. So he doesn't have enough. If he had a full stack, I would play on, but he just doesn't have enough to make it worth it. So, cause when I hit my hand, it's not going to be worth it. He's just not going to have enough money behind. I like this three bet here. That is a stupidly small bet take this one down. Spinach kind of really stays in your mouth for a while. I'm like... Yeah. I was just in here thinking, like, you're saying that, and I'm like, mm, I'm, ri I'm I'm rinsing, like, my mouth. I'm, I'm like, that spinach flavor sure is delicious. Can you refill the... Oh. Oh, yeah. All right. I realized it. I get called, make the king... I mean, I'm not folding to this player, like, if you hadn't figured it out, he's the target. Hey, new peak. You never have to be embarrassed about how much you're chatting, Leslie? Here, I'll do you. I'll do you a favor. If you get self-conscious, how about this? I'll clear the chat. <laughs> but I like the engagement, so feel free to talk as much as you like and ask as many questions as you like. And it doesn't even have to be about poker. You can ask me my favorite fucking color, or you know, what I look for in a uh, girlfriend or boyfriend. We've been watching the, uh, we've made it through the first two episodes of the Beatles, uh, the, the, what is it called, Get Back, the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the, the documentary from the, from the footage from the fucking 60s. Uh, it's fucking crazy. It's so good too. And the thing that you don't really expect is that it makes you fall in love with Ringo. Like I always liked Ringo, but it makes you feel like he's the greatest human being on the planet. Like, he's just such a good guy, and he's so affable. Hey, we got some people here. How you guys doing? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and... Bet small. I'm just not really worried about much here. It's really funny because I thought about checking the turn because he really can't have much on Queen 7 Deuce, but. 
Some players just compulsively call. You're 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 freaking out, Chuchi. Nothing there. I did. Chuchi was putting his head back and forth. <laughs> Is there a dog out there singing McCarthy's part? Look at him, look at him. <laughs> He's doing the head tilt like mad. Finally, a version of Hey Jude for Dogs. I'm a huge Lennon fan. Who loves you, Chooch? Well, to be truthful, if I had to pick, I'm more of a Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> so, what the fuck is she doing? <clears throat> so, no. <sighs> Getting fat and out of breath. Listen, I forgot that we had the island ones. Oh yeah, you haven't cracked those boxes, have you? To even open them? Just them right now. All right. It's because I still have fruit snacks in my purse and stuff. Because I had been. Oh, you've been hoarding them in your purse. <laughs> Stuffing them in there, or taking them with me to Michael's, or yeah. I'm hot. Are you hot? Um, definitely stuffy. Yeah, like like not so much warmth, but need well, some was, air movement. I would get up and move, but he just came and stood. This sucks because I have the hand that should be calling here, but that bet's way too big. This player just made a pot builder, so he's got a big chunk of this. So I need the ten. All right. If a spade had come off on the turn, I was gonna cry. When this player's all in, you cannot. Oh, and he hits the. He makes two pair. Yeah, it just it just seemed like he was good, right? Oh, please, please reload. Don't don't get disheartened. All right, good. He's reloading. All right, so let's see. Now I'm confused as to why the pineapple shape is red. I don't really know. Is it orange shape is orange. Is it like, an orange, or is it like a mango or something? Like this is cut out as a pineapple. Yeah. Hang on. But it's a red gummy. Or, or how am I gonna? How do I know? The thing is, this player can have seven nine. I don't know if I can. Can I bluff him off this? I'm gonna check. Ace six. Yeah. If he had an ace, I don't think I'm getting him off of it. So that's fine. It's good to conserve that last bet because he's never folding there. So. It's just okay. It's it's good information to know. I'll just make the note on him. Uh, we can call this. Look at this fucking gut shot straight flush top pair. Yeah. That was a spot to limp, but it's it's kind of not. Okay, Bucky. Deuce. No, there's no deuce there. So I'm just going to call this because both these players are super short. So I'm not protecting my hand in the least. I am perfectly fine getting all the money in at any point. Uh, and when this player raises, it's kind of whatever. Yeah, my friend here is just being over aggressive. But it's okay, I'll get him. Maybe it's supposed to be dragon fruit. Dragon fruit doesn't look like a pineapple before it's cut. Well, it looks like a big, you know, the big red outside looking. Yeah, no, this has the diamonds cut into it and, and huh. pineapple tail. That's weird. I could def I could definitely be behind here, but I don't think I can do anything other than call. There's just too many outs: a nine, a ten, a jack, a diamond. Yeah, queens. I mean, he didn't play it correctly. He should have been three betting preflop. So I had 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 40, 15, 16 outs going to the river. I had about 33%. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Oh, that was definitely 
kiwi. Ew. Hard to do a kiwi flavor. It wasn't bad, but I don't like kiwi. Fuck that. You don't like kiwi? I don't buy itself, but I know it was strawberry. If I had known that was a kiwi, I would have ate a strawberry gummy with it. You know what actually enhanced kiwi for me? Like, I know it's going to sound very strange. That was guava. Huh? What the fuck? What enhanced it? Uh, leaving the skin on. Yeah, oh, I know. That was weird. It's I, so weird. I remember you went through that. No, I still like it. And I it's know. it's really nutritious, but it's it's good. Like, really? you just slice it right down and just eat it. It's it's nice. And I don't know what it is, but also the, the part closest to the rind is a little bit more sour. And you can totally eat it. It's actually excellent for you. And I really like it. I just backed off of it because I really like it with the tahini shit. And uh, I was getting way too much salt. <laughs> I was just like, really took a I'll be back in a bit. Uh, my friend went live and doesn't usually stream more than an hour at a time. All right, nice. Who's your friend? So the island gummies, kind of good, as long as I don't have a reaction to them because they're good at pineapple. Awesome. Love that we're playing this gamble. We did this before with the gummies from... All I'm saying is I'm comfortable. You're driving yourself to the hospital. <laughs> they were really tasty. I hope I have... When you talk to Sabai, get her to prescribe you an EpiPen. Okay. Now that we have the damn insurance. We'll do. Why are you staring at me? Do you want some love? And fruit Ooh, snacks. He is, his hip crackled yesterday, and it was like 15 pencils. It was like... <laughs> yeah, that's what, I'm, I feel like it was just his thing hitting the collar, but mm. other things. Well, I mean, it wasn't anything bad. He didn't even wince. It was just kind of... I almost three-bet this. I just didn't do it because this player behind had been fucking with him too much. That's kind of not a great reason, but... Twenty two with twenty two, sure. Hey, look at that deuce. All right, well, we're definitely doing this. Uh, that's a big bet. I'm just going to call it. This player doesn't have many chips, so he should just be betting. If he has an ace, I don't see him going anywhere, so I'm just going to go ahead and bet half pot. Yeah, he didn't have anything. Open ender, backdoor flush draw. This is one where people think you should bet. You really shouldn't. Because when I have all this draw, I should just let the draw come off. Can't fold. Ooh, I made this drizzle. So it's kind of hard to raise here because he can definitely have king queen or queen nine. But I think I'm gonna. He'll definitely call me with an ace queen. I mean, if he jams, I think I have to fold. But yeah, that's a good raise. That's a good raise. Ace king, even less. He's look at this hero calling. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. A lot of people don't raise that. That's like the guy who made the flush on me on the paired board. Yeah. Player three bets preflop. The only real hand I'm worried about him having is king queen because that makes the full house. But he's going to have ace queen a ton, check the flop, bet the turn, bet the river. But I think if you have king queen, uh, you bet that river kind of bigger. Uh, because the players that have been sticking around are either going to call you or fold because they had draws. Maybe they picked up a pair. But having the ace-king there and calling off is just the height of fucking uh, fishness. So this is not a great spot. I am going to bet a little smaller, um, only because basically it's either they play on or they don't. This isn't one where... We get too many. Uh, I'm going to bet this one small on the lead. Seven on the turn is kind of good for me. I'm going to go ahead and bet again. Because the player, sh the, I was really just worried about sets, but once the board pairs, it's kind of t 
thirty percent less likely. So I think betting again is fine, um, and I just don't want to let a free card come off for a flush or a straight. I'll fold this one. So this player raises. This is a limped pot. Uh, he raises kind of small. I'm just going to call spade on the or the uh, turn card should freeze the action for him a lot. He bets big. Um, I don't think this is one I can continue. Yeah, I, th I think he's either got a better jack or the the flush. Uh, I just I just don't see much reason to keep going. He didn't even have a set full, right? It was a limp pot. Uh, I'm just gonna bet here. There's there's nothing for them to have, but maybe maybe we get a call from a spade draw or something. But I have all the board, but I have to I have to start building a pot at some point, right? I thought about just leading the flop because this player does wacky shit, but I don't know. <laughs> that was funny. I threw my avocado on yeah. an accident and I hit you too. <laughs> hey, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't need an avocado. Can you pass it up, please? Oh, the avocado? <laughs> hey, that's my avocado now. You just chilling on the floor there, Chooch? Right. Yeah. Ooh. I'm feeling low energy Choochness. I think we absolutely go for the three bet here. I think we can open this one as well because of the poster behind. I think this player is donking into me when I have the nuts. Uh, I am going to bet this. This is one of those one shots. Like, somebody's either got a queen or they don't. This guy should have a queen a lot. I don't think he ever folds. As long as he doesn't have queen jack, we're good. that get called? What happened there? No, I just took it down. I mean, he should have a lot of queens and just pay me right off, right? Yeah. A7. Wow, people are optimistic. You can't always have it. No, but I can this time. I'm surprised this went down so quickly. I bet it big to kind of look like bullshit. But it's one of those ones where it's, again, I think I'm getting called 50-50, so why not bet bigger when I have it? Like, I think the same, I think it gets called at the same frequency as a one-third pot bet. This is the guy I want to play against. So we're going to ISO. Don't really love this call behind, but that's my buddy there. I just hate that he's on a short stack. I wish he was I wish he had reloaded. It's not the worst flop, but it's definitely not great. I think we do want to bet something. Get called. Uh, let's check the turn. He just doesn't have enough chips to bluff him. I'm just going to give it up quickly. It's fine. Unless he has a hand like 5-6, there's really no nothing here. I mean, in... He's just always going to have a diamond. There's just no point. It's fine. I like it, too, because it keeps him thinking he's making moves. He's, he's already given me his stack. Well, one and a half his stack. <laughs> he can have the little $3 pots if I can have the, uh, the $15 ones. Give me all your money. 
kind of be like that, though. from your motherfuckers? No. They don't love you anymore. Probably not. Get me out of here. They don't love me no more. It's <laughs> annoying. Huh? What the fuck's that from? Baby boy. Oh, God. That's a movie that's definitely a one-time watch. Oh, no. I, can, I, shit, I cannot rewatch that thing. After the line about in my car, it's like, okay, I've seen enough. In my car, Jody? It's so funny, like, I don't know what this player's calling, but, like, I'm only leading because I don't think anybody else will on that board, but I don't know what you're calling the flop that you're not calling that turn with. Like, a good diamond, a queen, like, what are you, I don't understand the folds. Come on into the pot, buddy. You're the guy I want with these queens, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Probably gonna bet pretty, raise pretty big, especially if this player comes in. Nice. They're totally expecting me to do this, so I'm gonna go bigger, bigger. Normally this raise would be like seven blinds, but I think going nine is, is better here. That's who I want. And we're just gonna take our time. Hopefully he has a jack. Because if he does, we'll bust him. We're just going to get him committed to the pot. I'm going to take a couple extra seconds. If he's got me beat, he's got me beat. That's just too bad. Should be good. Yeah, way to play, bro. Thanks for another stack. <laughs> Zero doubt. Zero doubt. That's why you bet big, to isolate the players that you want to isolate. Because those are my pots. No, Nobody else gets to play with him. He's my, fun. He's my friend. Where am I at? Ooh, up three and a half buy-ins. That's pretty good for... What is that? About an hour and 15? Yeah, that's pretty good. 350 blinds, approximately. Pretty good hourly rate. 170 blinds an hour. Let me do that for every stake I ever play for one year. <laughs> I'll give up poker. Dropping frames again. They're really working on this fucking bullshit. The, uh, the internet here. Like, I keep, I keep checking the, the Cox thing. Mm -hmm. Every time I start dropping frames, it's like, sorry, we're working to make improvements in your area. And it's mm -hmm. just like, <laughs> it's like, can you make them already? Because you're really affecting me over right. long periods of time. It's, it's so random. Like, if they would just do it at the same time every day, it'd be better. It's funny, because they tend to do it more at night, which I guess at this point most people are sleepy, right, but... They're trying not to affect people who are doing jobs. Like, yeah. yeah. They're like regular 9 to 5 e. Right. This is kind of sketch now because of the queen. So I'm going to check it back. I'm calling a river bet unless it's just all in. Because he can have a queen. I don't know if he has the, the hearts here very much at all. 
but he could have a he could have a pair like a pair of jacks or something. Uh, kind of depends how much he bets. I think if he bets less than the pot, yeah, I'm gonna check. I think I win. Set of queens. Wow, you play bad, bro. <laughs> ah, you play so bad. I bet I could have gotten a fold too if I'd taken the right betting strategy. I'll bet I could have gotten the fold. Uh, I'm just gonna bet here for value and protection. I'm just gonna call this one. I don't have anything here to. Oh wow! I had he actually had a draw. I thought he might have had like a queen or something. That's funny. I like that I checked it though. He gets to see that I don't just always bluff. All right, we'll limp this one. I'm gonna check it. I've been I've been experimenting in the blinds. I mean, I should have the best hand a lot with queen high, believe it or not. Yeah. I mean, there's not much thought to that, but it's just interesting to me. Nice to see people coming out. I won't call you out, but I see your names there. <clears throat> Queen's not bad. <sighs> mm. Tempting. Because it's shorthanded, but I think I want to three bet it and from the small blind versus under the gun. Eh, it's not great. Well, I think I definitely want to take one card off. The thing is, this bet's gonna get three to one because there's there's a couple players in this pot that are gonna call very wide because the bet's so small. So I don't even see this as big a bet as it is because it's going to get called. Yeah, see, here's one of them. Got called twice. The nine is not great for my plight. Because <laughs> a nine, you know, that's the thing. If this guy has a nine or this guy has a nine, they can definitely call. <laughs> Haven't seen you in forever. Is 25 NL your jam or do you play MTTs too? Uh, good luck. Thank you, Rounder. Um, I don't like this because of the players behind. I'm giving it up. I think my queen just got beat. Um, mostly I play uh, tournaments. Um, yeah, I just want to let you know that there's a delay. Um, I play cash games at night usually when I don't have much time, but I full-time play MTTs. Um, so, yeah. Haven't been on in forever, man. Uh, I, I took a break uh, when I got kind of bitter about how Twitch was treating poker streamers because you had to basically get tapped on the head by the uh, guy Scott Ball to get a uh, sub button. But now, you know... So, did a name change and a rebrand. That's why you're following me and didn't uh, didn't know it was me. <laughs> so it's a different channel name. It's a different outlook. Uh, the the YouTube channel is much different. So if you're following the old one, follow the new one. Exclamation point YouTube. And uh, it's a lot of good edited content. It's a lot more fun uh, now. Uh, no, they're together. Uh, it's WSOP Nevada, New Jersey, and uh, Delaware are all this, are all the same player pool. I kind of like this squeeze. I know this seems kind of meh, but a min open like this cold call is the thing that worries me. But I think when I can get position, I think I like the three bet here. This is kind of great for my range. Like unless this player just has a fucking overpair. I kind of like this flop for my range. Yeah, just get the fold out of the small, get the fold out of the big. I like, it's one of those things that it's a move that I'm doing so much that I don't think it should work, but I'm just falling back on uh, GTO. 
Uh, this player is short, so I'm just going to call this one. If it was offsuit, I would probably 3-bet. Uh, but I'm just falling back on GTO, and uh, it's working for me. You probably know me from uh, about five years ago. Uh, I actually took a break of 1,486 days. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget that number because it was two weeks shy of uh, uh, 1,500. And I thought about delaying the start of the stream so I could say I took a break for 1,500 days. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I streamed uh, uh, full time. I was an ACR stormer. And uh, did all that kind of stuff, kind of bad things went, happened, whatever, blah, blah, blah. WSOP online events. I did play uh, tournaments on WSOP back in the day. Uh, I don't so much anymore. I have played a few, but there's a couple reasons why I don't like to do that. Like this camera setup that you see me have right now, this isn't my normal camera. Normally, uh, there's no box around me. It's like a green screen thing, but I use Zoom to do it. And I can't do that on WSOP. So when I do tournaments... I like having my full setup uh, and playing on ACR. It seems like a silly reason not to stream tournaments on one site versus the other, but I get kicked off every hour using the Zoom cam because of geolocation if I'm playing on WSOP. So it's annoying to me, and the thing that I decided if I went back to streaming is that I had to enjoy it. So I'm, I'm not going to be annoyed by some technical issue, you know what I'm saying? So fuck it, there's other tournaments. I can play tons of stuff on ACR, and I don't need the WSOP tournaments. You know, if there's big events down the line, then I'll uh, play them. Am I? Oh, you are scratching me. Okay. I thought I heard you. This is Chuchi. Full name at Major Chuchi Chunquito Juarez. You may remember him when he was a puppy. If you're a fan of my stream from back in the day, he was part of the infamous Oops, Dog Fell clip because he still likes to jump up on my shoulders while I play. And uh, back in the day, he fell right off the back of my fucking chair. And the only reaction I had was, Oops, Dog Fell. He's kind of a goofy boy. Like, where are you going? What are you trying to accomplish here? Do you want to go up here? Oh, your hip just popped something fierce, sir. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the good luck, my man. Where are you going? There's nowhere for you to sit here. I don't have a lap, buddy. I'm sitting in this chair. There's no lap. Here, come up on my shoulder. Get up there. I think we can bet for slim value here. Okay? Now you be a good boy up there. Don't fall. You're sliding. Well, this player is raising under the gun. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play this big. Uh, I don't love it because of the player under the gun. I usually like to trap this scenario, but yeah. As long as I don't get 4-bet, I think I'm okay. Oh, god damn it. trying to tell me he had to go out. Uh -oh. I didn't realize how late it was. Yep, that's an overpair.
Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. I don't, I don't think that's new. I've never seen it before. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Apparently, he wasn't wanting a cuddle. it was during a cash game right <laughs> do that during tournaments buddy we got a problem exclamation point dog <laughs> i should put a, a command in for the dogs link to pictures yeah if you didn't catch what happened there he just totally uh uh got up behind me and then pooped <laughs> Guy that shit on the hot ones. Oh, oh, um, the, the, um, mm, uh, Bobby, uh, yeah. Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee. Could you just Bobby lead you? He Bobby lead me. He was trying to tell me he needed to go out. I picked him up to cuddle with him and he pooped. Not a big deal. He just dropped it right to the ground. <laughs> At least it didn't get on your hood. No. No, his, his, I picked his ass up over my hood. And put him to the side. I'm watching Choochie's shit now <laughs> in the replay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Just over three buy ins tonight. They have this, uh, like, pink hydro flask. Shaped like a martini glass. Weird. So it's these double insulated metal martini glasses. Because hmm. who said adults can't have a sippy cup or two? Now your last sip of shaken icy goodness will be as chilled as the first. But it's also great at holding your favorite ice cream, shrimp cocktail sauce, or anything you want. To is the is show. the top of it open? Yeah. Well, they they ha it has like a sippy. Cup. You could it has. A oh, I get it. Cup. Okay. Like this. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like a. It's like the martini glass a marine would use or something. Right? It comes in all kind of different colors. Of course. For all the soccer moms. Yeah, that's definitely a soccer mom kind of thing. Well, this is the ad. Jesus. That's just enabling. This is interesting because I'm leading. I don't suspect this player to have anything great, but I'm going to go with the representing the draw. The ace in the turn is kind of awesome. So we're going to probably get it in. This is tempting, but no. Yeah, because I would have been in a sticky situation right here. 
I don't, I don't like the 10 here. I think he has an overpair. I think he... Yeah, the ace might have killed my action. I think he had, like, jacks or queens or something. And uh, the ace kind of killed it. I'm glad I got the value when I could. Does WSOP have any rakeback or reward systems? Um, not really. Uh, what they do have, though, is every month, at some point through the month, they'll do a match bonus up to... Usually, it's around 400 bucks. Uh, sometimes it's up to a thousand. So what I do or what I would do, well, I guess I'm going to be doing it again next month, um, is I make a withdrawal for the maximum of the match bonus, right? Then make the deposit with the match bonus using the code. And as long as you do it in that order, WSOP has no problem with that. So then every hundred points you clear, you get five bucks and you also get player points after you once you reach the bronze level, which is just right here. So I just started playing cash again. This is only like my fifth session. I've already built up all these points. So I'll be at past the bronze. I'll be up to the bronze level probably by the end of next week. So it goes very quickly. And once you get to that point, then you can start converting player points into cash. So you probably get back. Uh, this is one where I just have to play this big because he's going to have an overpair with a spade a lot. And we're just going to get it in. No. Okay. Um, he should, coming out of first, but maybe he just had nothing. So basically the way it works out is like every 100 points you get 5 bucks for the match bonus. And on top of that, you can trade in and I think you get an additional dollar for every 100 points. Uh, and then once you get into the higher levels, the silver and the platinum and whatever, you get more and more. When I was platinum before, or no, it was double diamond or whatever. I was the highest level. Uh, I used to get 3 bucks per 100, which was amazing, 100 points. Uh, which was really great and you could redeem it daily best part about that though was that I got into the diamond lounge and all the casinos it was way too fancy for me because I used to play some live and I found out that through my total rewards I could go into the diamond lounge this is kind of sketch but I don't see a four bet coming so I like 10-9 a lot and I don't mind calling it this player is just going to have aces or kings a ton there it is I really hope somebody hit a set because I just want to be shown that I'm right right here, but he's just going to have aces or kings. Because he, he did the limp raise jam. And it's just like, it's so basic, like you don't even think it exists anymore, but it totally does on WSOP. So yeah, so for 100 points, so it probably works out to somewhere around 20% rake back with the match bonus and the point conversion, which isn't bad. Like on ACR, I get 27%, uh, which by the way, if you're not signed up on ACR and you want that deal, click it through my link, make a deposit of 25 bucks. When I see that it's cleared, I'll send you 10 bucks myself. Uh, right th right on ACR. And uh, you get 27% rake back and a match bonus there. Uh, I've been an affiliate of theirs for over five years, so it's whatever. This is not a bluffing spot, uh, this one. Like, I when he takes that long, I kind of want to bet, but my hand is so, it has enough value that I can check. Well, when it checks around, I kind of like it. No, I'm going to check it again. I, sh I, I thinking I could bet it, but. All right, I guess we just check, and if it checks down, I win, right? Oh, he had a five. That's I thought he was on the flush draw, but he actually had a five. That's why he was waiting. What did the other guy have? The nine? Deuces. Uh, I guess, well, you know what? I could have bet it if I bet the turn. So this player raised. I three bet him, and then I flopped the ultimate board. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try to look bluffy, which can either be really small or really big. If he has a better king in this scenario, he's going to get a lot of chips. No. He was thinking about it. Yeah, when I had the double diamond for total rewards, I went to Planet Hollywood. Yeah, I went to Planet Hollywood because I would you would cash out on WSOP and you'd have to go pick up your cash, right? So I went to Planet Hollywood and I go to pick up my cash. And this is right when I got to that top level. And I went and I made a withdrawal. And uh, I was thinking, you know, man, maybe I'll, you know, go to check out the poker room or whatever. And I gave my total rewards card to the woman in the cage. She then sees that and she says, oh, 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 come with me. And she walks me around to a separate lane 
that they're serving the double diamond people. She's like, you didn't have to wait here. And she's like, you could have gone right to this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And she's like, oh, by the way. And then the cage manager comes out. He comes around and he's like, hello, Mr. Kromberg. How are you today? And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, who are you? And he's like, oh, I manage the cage. And I figured I might introduce myself since you're a diamond reward level player. And I'm like, okay. And he was just like, uh, so what can I do for him? I'm like, I'm just looking for a cash out, man. And uh, this is off WSP. He goes, oh, well, congratulations. You know, blah, blah, blah. You're a poker player. You know, I believe we're having a poker tournament today. And I was like, yeah, I saw that. And maybe I'll play it. But I was going to play some cash. And he goes, uh, well, if you have some time. And I was like, okay. And he goes, uh, he goes, uh, why don't we go to the Diamond Rewards Lounge and I can show you what that's all about. Because he's like, I see that you're a new Diamond Reward level. And I'm like, okay. This is hilarious that this guy made his best hand and then didn't raise me on the river. Like, I had him crush the whole way, but he filled the gut shot. Like, look at this. He calls it for the gut shot on the turn, picks up the open ender on the turn after the calling on the flop, makes the fucking thing on the river. That's why I bet that two pair is because people just make that mistake and they don't bet. Like, he could have raised me there and I'm calling a pretty big bet. Um, so the guy takes me to the Diamond Rewards Lounge and literally, I wish I could remember the guy's name. It was it was a weird butlery kind of name. I, I don't know what it was, but it was it was like he said Jeeves or something. Really? This guy's overbet jamming. I mean, I have top pair. The problem is he's so short that I'm not folding. Yeah, he's just gonna have a shittier jack, right? Yeah. It's also the worst play, right? Because when he has a jack, like, shouldn't he just bet small or check? But whatever. So anyway, so we go to the Diamond Rewards Lounge. And uh, he's showing me all around the place. And they had a full buffet of, not a full buffet, but it was like snacks. It was like, you know, shrimp and, well, actually it was a lot of, well, now that I think about it, yeah. Yeah, it was a it, lot of it, it was, full-on, like, buffet. Yeah, I sent you pictures, right? Mm -hmm. Did I send you pictures? And it, yeah, it was a full-on buffet. They had, like, steak skewers and and shrimp and uh it wasn't a buffet but it was like this was all set out for you. right it was like well it was it was yeah it was on like a buffet tray but yeah 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 it wasn't like a full buffet but it was a small room there was only like 20 chairs in there or something like with little tables like little personal tables and at every third table there was an older asian guy sitting there just pounding on some shrimp you know and uh, it's like and i walk in <laughs> And uh, the guy's like, oh, well, we have this and we have that. And I'm like, oh, well, that's great. And I was like, uh, and I'm looking around and he goes, and, and I said something to the effect of, uh, you know, so what's your uh, lunch special or something or whatever like that? And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. This is all complimentary. And I was like, oh, like I was literally like, how much does this shit cost? <laughs> and uh, then the guy, and he's like, I'm going to leave you in. God, the guy had a weird name. I really wish I could remember it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bet this for value still. Uh, he could have just led out with an ace and now I've just crushed it. But yeah, I'm just not stopping betting when I have kings. So he's like, I'll leave you in this guy's capable hands. Uh, he's here to get you anything you need. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, bro, I'm just kind of sitting around. I'm just going to make some, te I got to make some calls and stuff. And he's like, oh, that's perfectly fine. Let me know if you need a drink or something. I was like, I could actually I could go for a Diet Coke. And he goes, is that all you want? Because I've been studying bartending, blah, blah, blah. And he gives me this whole thing. And I'm like, really? Like he was a full on butler. And I go, I go, I'll tell you what, I haven't had a decent mojito since South, since I left South Florida. And he goes, I just learned that one. And he goes and brings out a case, and it has a muddle thing, and it, it had the whole, like, crazy intense. You know, he made me the best mojito of my life. And uh, he said, he's like, oh, well, thank you so much. He's like, he was so proud because he had just learned how to do it, like, the previous two days or something. And uh, it was really a fun experience. And I, I went there... I probably went there like once a week. Well, it was when I would cash out. I would go like once a week and then uh, go see my buddy and get a mojito. And uh, played live at Planet Hollywood a bit after that, so it worked on me. I mean, I'm not gambling like they're gambling. But, uh, you know, these Asian dudes, woof. Like, there were, there were guys sitting at tables with plaques. And if you've never seen them, they're like bigger than credit card type of things. And they're these big, thick like like the size of my wallet kind of things and they have numbers printed on them and uh, I knew that the cranberry ones that I was looking at they were like this deep red color uh, were $50,000 and there was a guy sitting there like eating his fucking shrimp and he had just a stack of them like these guys are like playing you know Baccarat for like 110k a hand it's fucking insane and I'm over there like just grinding 
50 hours a week, you know, 10, 20, and 50 an L and getting to the same, you know, benefits level when nobody's making any money off of me. <laughs> but they don't know that. I don't mind this. Hey, quads. He just checked it down. He didn't even bet because he wanted to show it. These games are kind of dying because it's getting late. I may jump over to Blitz Poker. I don't know how often this is a king. This player is kind of betting in position. It's kind of a bigger bet, though. I think he's going to smash the river. I'm just going to let it go. It's fine. His bet sizing earns him that pot. I'm thinking about jumping over to Blitz on ACR. Because, like, this table's kind of dead. and I think, I think by getting off some of the deader games, I'll, or getting off this dead game, it'll kind of refill this one. I'm gonna meh, 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 meh. Yeah, it's close. I fucking love watching pandas, bro. Right. They just roll around. This guy is a rock. My man has only played so few hands, and both times it's been in first position. He is a rock a lock. Like that's crazy gonna call this one that's why I was contemplating the raise because he's just totally yeah he's just the tightest player there is which there's a lot of those guys on here yeah I think I need to ditch this game for sure down here <laughs> I just saw a video of how the fuck did these things survive in the wild and it's just a I panda just the one I just oh where he's rolling down the hill mm -hmm. and it's just like I fucking love it. I'm like, what do you mean? How does he survive? He's just like, tuck and roll, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Those things have been protected for so fucking long. <laughs> like, I think they were one of the first protected endangered species because they were, uh, what is it, China or Japan's national animal or something. <laughs> but they're just these goofy dumbasses. This one I just sent you, you have to watch right yeah. now. Oh, that's funny. I don't understand why they jumped. Because they forgot it was a screen. It looks like a window, so your brain kind of makes you think that a car is coming through the a, window. Aren't they looking at a, at a screen of them? Yeah, but they're looking at their... They're, they're <coughs> seeing them and a window behind them. That's so funny. That was so funny. That is pretty hilarious. I just didn't even know what it was like. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to get off this table... I'm 
just going to call the ace queen. I don't really love the ace 10 out of first, but I'm not going to fold it. Like, you kind of have to tread lightly with this one. Yeah, I'm just going to kill this table. Should I bring up some blitz? Eh, four games. That's a good thing that I didn't three bet the uh, the aces. I am gonna bet something. I'm gonna check this. Eh, I guess I should have three bet. Uh, I'm gonna go for the small bet. Like sometimes this is a nine, and I can't really get them off of it, but. Other times, this kind of works. Nice. That two street bluff, it's kind of, it's, it's very subtle. It's very subtle as to why this works. But like you can see on the turn, like this small bet, like it really isn't afraid of much, so you're kind of only going to get raised by somebody who's afraid of getting drawn out on, which means a nine, like a good nine, uh, king nine or so, or a, a good jack will, will pump up this pot for value. So when they both call, it kind of means they're both on a draw. And there are draws like queen 10, there are draws like diamonds and things like that. And uh, it's just kind of... Uh, situationally, it's my hand becomes much stronger. And... Uh, I'm betting the river here just so I'm not beat by like a deuce. Like, because a lot of times people will also call with like, you know, deuce five or something. This is interesting, but I'm gonna let it go. Uh, or like uh, ace deuce or whatever, and then that beats me. So I think betting here is important. Once this player folds, I think it's over because this guy would have just gotten all the money in. So it's an interesting, subtle little bluff that you can run, but you have to have two streets to bet. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't pull that off on the flop and river. You have to be checking the flop and then taking control of the pot after that. I like that little, that this, this raise. Check this out. So all these players limp and uh, there's five blinds out here and I go ahead and make it 9x and they just fold. Those are the steals that really like carry you through the dead, dead sessions. Plus it keeps you from losing your soul when you're not getting enough cards. Uh, well, there's a good number of people on Blitz. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. I'm just going to play this for a little while longer. I think it's fine. Uh, player checks. Uh, I am going to bet. Uh, this player knows that I like to bet, so he could definitely be trapping, but he's only got such a short stack, he should just be check jamming. So when he calls, he's either got it nutted or he's got a draw. He's only got three bucks left though, so I'm gonna check and kind of take my chances. Um, he's gonna bluff at some portion less than all in, which is stupid. So I think I win here a lot. Yeah, just a gut shot, right? Well, double gutty, I guess. I thought about betting the turn, but I'm thinking what draws does he really have? The problem is he's raising out of first with just literal anything, so it's kind of hard to pin him down, but But, so maybe I missed a street of value on the turn there. Now this game's dying. <clears throat> um, I'm going to just call this one because this player is too short. I think if he wants to four bet, it's kind of bad. Uh, my buddy here who's limping in first again, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and raise. Okay, so it's going to cost me 215 So I'm not really getting the odds I need. If this player calls, I think I can call. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and bet this and represent the overpair. So it's 215 to win 625 Combined, they have 12 13 bucks. 625 plus 13 19 bucks. So I need let's say 215 150 Yes, I have it. Okay. All right, now this is where it gets complicated. Uh, I'm going to play the small blind here, but then kill this table. So this player should only be betting big. I think, yeah, that's tough. Uh, 
it's tough when this guy goes all in. It is really tough when this player goes all in. Yeah. I, I think he had something like... He could have had something like jacks or queens even that wants to see a safe flop, but... Once this guy checks, he's not he's not bluff jamming into a player that's yet to, yet to act behind. So um, this is this player just doesn't have enough money. This is one where I love the hand, but the 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 main player in the pot doesn't you know he has ten fucking blinds on the table. So what's the point of that? How many are on this table? Seven and six. Like, I'd rather this table filled back up just because there's more money on it. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to kill this one. And I think I'm going to get off this table, too. And then open up and play some blitz on ACR. I'm not going to count that towards the challenge because it's a WSOP challenge, but I'm going to I'm going to underplay the Ace Ten versus the only other player with a good stack. All right, ten on the turn. I'm going to bet he can have King Queen. Yeah, see, this is the problem. Uh, I'm going to jam against this guy. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's I know it's a race. Come on, he wants to end his night. Ah. Oh well. Only because he had like 20 blinds. Um, yeah, so I'm going to kill this. Bring this up here. And I guess... Yeah, let's look at some blitz. Well, there's like 60 players in the player pool, so... This is 10 and L blitz on ACR. And if you don't know what blitz is, you'll you'll catch on quick. As soon as you fold, you get zipped to another table. Problem is there's only 10 tables right now, so it's there's going to be a little delay. Usually it's like zoom 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 zoom. Usually it's like that faster, faster. Be nice to get some hands playing uh, Zoom. got it man no matter what you have you have the best hand Ken Jack King 10 why limp it you're in first position you see bad players on there but it's a different kind of bad player uh, see the wrong tables died well I guess they're all dying uh, I can call this one so this table's now at five. Jesus. Well, it's at six, but this player's fucking sitting out. <sighs> Definitely calling here. I like the float in this scenario. There's a lot of cards that I can represent on the turn. All right, I'll play the small blind. This player check raises. See, this is the problem with the short player on the table, is that he's doing this with all draws. All right, I want to see what happens in this hand. I would have see this is the thing. If this player had folded and this guy just called, I'd be bluffing this turn a hundred percent. 
Jax. Wow, man. That's hilarious. Just raised it and then check raise the flop. On a super dangerous board. It's really bad. Where is my fucking HUD? Players tend to automatically 3-bet on the button. So when that's the case, you need to open your 4-betting range. like my HUD for ACR, please. He's either calling that or he's not, so might as well bet big. Like, he's going to call a third pot bet or a full pot bet in that scenario. He just has to have something strong enough. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. I kind of want to float. I can have the best hand a lot here. I can look like I have a set quite a bit. He checks back, 10 on the river. I'm kind of semi-blocker betting. If he has just two big cards, he kind of gives it up. I don't think this goat's too many bluffs, unless he has exactly the ace of diamonds in his hand. Yeah, just kind of makes sense, right? People have so many automatic moves that they make that it really kind of is easy to play against. Like if you, if you sit there actually thinking about what goes on. I think this is one we can just bet super small and get away with it. All right, I'll play one more round here. Player calls, look at that deuce turn. Now we overbet because he's super rarely going to have ace, king, or king, nine. So we're just overcharging the flush draw. If you got ace, king, or king, nine, congrats, man. I guess he could have nine, ten, or eight, nine. But I think he's going to have two pairs a lot here. If he has a hand that beats me, that's whatever, but I'm not folding. King, queen. Sorry, sucker. If something looks weird, it's usually a bluff unless the guy hit a set on the turn. Good, good thing to remember there. He calls. The problem is he has a lot of ace threes, deuce threes, four threes. Yeah, you just got there. That's fine. He just made two pair or better, so I have no bluffs. 
He's going to do that with deuce three, three, four, four, five, ace three. Uh, and all those hands either made two pair or straight. So my raise on the flop with ace king would be smart. But then when he leads the turn, it's just like, dude, you got it. It's no longer a draw. Like, it was either a spade draw or a straight draw. So having a pair with a gut shot, super strong in that scenario when the wheel card comes off. So I just give it up automatically. I don't even have to fucking think about it. Three-way pot. I'm just going to check this one. Uh, button's going to have a lot of jacks. Doesn't mean I'm folding. Still have a lot of outs. This player bets it's kind of the worst. Yeah, well, I'm going to let it go. It's fine. Uh, the auto three bet from the same short stack player. Okay. It's half pot. Doesn't mean much, but I feel like he's tighter overall. So I'm going to let it go. Yeah, the WSOP is done. I mean, it's just too late in Vegas. Nobody's playing. So. I mean, sometimes the poop takes it out of you. He was he was trying to tell me, I just didn't realize what he was saying. It's funny because as he was climbing up there, I was like, I hope he doesn't poop. It's funny because he's he's. But I didn't say anything because I I, re I recognize the time it was, but I also I yeah. Him, so I didn't want to take him out, so. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take him out and you know shortly, so it's fine. Oh. Oh, I'm so sleepy. Absolutely going to check this. So this is interesting. The call behind is interesting. It was only a min open. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give it up yet, but I, I will just because I didn't assert my hand. This is kind of meh. Uh, again, I'm going to let it go because I didn't assert my hand. See, now the check and this player doesn't bluff. I definitely folded the best hand when the wheel comes off, but... I, I just don't know what's happening when this player calls, and I'm not sure if he's on a draw or a better ace, so I just kind of got out of the way. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have anything. Uh, I, I threw away the winner. I, I honestly didn't think the turn would go check around. If I thought the turn would go check around, I would have called it every time. Oh, how does the turn go check, check? Like, the guy's got to have a draw. So the other guy was just betting garbage, like king-queen. Like, he min open and then bet an ace-high flop into three players with king-queen or king-jack or something. Maybe, like, a pair, like, nines, tens. Okay. So, I picked up uh, 450 playing 10 and L uh, zoom on uh, ACR. So, 45 blinds in 36 hands. That's pretty good. And let's close this out and see where I ended up. At $291.26. So we'll subtract that from the start. Made $31.37, which is three buy-ins. It's qui gone broke, man. We're rebuilding. So, uh, you know, three buy-ins isn't bad for two hours of work pretty good i'll take it for the rest of my life uh it was probably about because we played mostly five tables it was probably about mm, 300 maybe 600 hands yeah that would make sense about 50 big blinds per per out per hundred which obviously is way more than you're supposed to have but i'm playing way lower than i should be playing so kind of makes sense it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's daily streams at around noon. Between 11 and noon, I start them. Uh, uh, Vegas time, that's Pacific Standard, every day, uh, where we go over hand histories. We'll go over some fun hands that I marked in the uh, hand replayer and uh, stuff like that. And we're also doing now on the training site that I pay for, uh, co PokerCoaching.com, Jonathan Little's site. We're going through the Tournament Masterclass. We're currently up to uh, flop action and different examples on the flop. So 
uh, you're looking for this thumbnail that I doctored, which looks like this for the current section that we're doing. So today was the 81st episode. We're on part two of flop strategy when facing a bet. And this is my, uh, my thumbnail for it. So if you check out the YouTube and you want to see the section we're on, they all have different thumbnails to them. I think we're like 15 or 20 episodes in to doing the uh, Jedi mind tricks. Also, there's a new, uh, or, fit, or into, the, uh, into the tournament masterclass. This is the thumbnail for the new Jedi mind trick. It's really funny. It's based on blood sport, but it makes a really good uh, uh, instructive point. I think you guys are going to like it. And there's scenes from Bloodsport and music, and it's really fun the way I did it. Uh, so check it out. Follow the YouTube. Uh, enjoy it. I got new content coming out all the time. I want to start a day-to-day -day vlog, but I'm kind of trying to figure out the context of that. So maybe soon. But yeah, so I'll be back uh, tomorrow between 11 and noon. And if I'm not, that means it's a play day for tournaments. And I usually start playing tournaments around 1 p.m. Vegas time. And uh, yeah, so thanks for coming out and hanging out, guys. Keep me company. It made it a lot much more fun than just sitting here grinding out three buy-ins and, uh, you know, having you guys here to talk to. So I appreciate you. And uh, let me see. Is there anybody? Uh, let's see. Who's on? Uh, I think everybody's going off. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and end it and go walk my dogs. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. Thanks for coming out.